Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop for another week of SNS. So I think this week we're gonna have some more machine work for you to share. And this is also gonna be the weekend by the time you're watching this. I'm gonna be over there in Biloxi hanging out with Russ Jones and probably cooking up some barbecue and smoking some ribs and who knows what. So I'm gonna be enjoying my trip over there hopefully, uh, making this a little bit early and trying to get it done in preparation for the weekend. We've been really busy at work. Everybody's still putting in lots of overtime. Uh, all the guys down there at work, man, everybody's putting in just tons of overtime down there and uh, working real hard and trying to trying to get the, the work out the door. So the uh, it's been a little bit difficult to get out here and try to uh, do a bunch of SNS stuff this week. I was going to try to keep it short. We got a couple little viewer things I'm going to show you. Other than that, we're gonna. I've got some machine work that I'm going to share with you. We did. I've got the first job that I did on that Gator three jaw chuck that I want to share with you. I got some spacers I had to do a little bit of machine work on. We're going to throw that in there. And uh, there's going to be another. There's going to be another video after SNS that's just all machine work. Some uh, some more of the heavy machining stuff that I typically show. So stick around for that. But. Yeah, I'm looking forward to my trip over there, meeting Russ and, and getting to uh, hang out over in Biloxi and, and see some sights over there. So hopefully, I'm going to take my cameras and I'm hoping that I get some good video. Maybe we'll have us another uh, travel video to share on the channel there of uh, Biloxi. You know, maybe get some shots around Biloxi and maybe some things that I see over there. So we'll see how it goes. So we just ended our t-shirt campaign last weekend, the Clash at the Bash t-shirt campaign with uh, me and me and Keith Finner and I was I was very surprised to see that I actually won that by two sales mine was 217 and he he was 215 so we were both very surprised at the amount of support that we got out of that campaign that's a lot of t-shirts being sold you know over over 400 shirts there and everybody's already uh, starting to get them they, they should be if you haven't got yours yet you should be getting it really really soon so they are they started sending them out ahead of time and just uh, we we both want to thank everybody for that for the support there and that's really going to help stand out too over there uh, to help support the bar z bash for for the summer all right so in light of that i wanted to uh, show you something i actually got a viewer mail gift from keith finner himself so i want to read this little letter and then we'll talk about what he sent as well. He says, hey buddy, a picture for your YouTube room. Even if I have to eat crow, I couldn't help it. When I'm six foot under and you stare up at your wall in your YouTube office, I will surely bring a smile to your face. Cheers. <laughs> so there's a, there's a fun picture that, that Keith took uh, putting a round peg in a square hole there on his, on his four jaw chuck. And he signed it, Adam. Good luck, Keith Finner, three twenty nine, two thousand seventeen. And he's wearing the uh, the four the four jaw belt there that he made. So very cool picture. Thank you very much, Keith. I, I'm going to get this framed up, and it's going to go in there in the office. So very cool. He uh, he sent me one of his uh, right roller kits. We got some new stickers there. He's got his new walk to talk stickers. <laughs> All right, and his uh, get her done, get her done stickers. So we got some more of those. We we need to put a walk to talk over there on the cabinet. So we'll get one over there. And so what he's done is he sent me one of his right roller kits. So this is one of those kits that he sells that you do it yourself. He supplies the material, and this is uh, the drawings and the uh, you know the how to how to how to build them. I haven't even studied this yet to see what all is involved. I believe there's machine work and stuff involved that we got to do. So this, that's a picture, uh, you know, a CAD picture of what it looks like. And it's rollers and they're mounted on trunnion so, so that, you know, the trunnion will swing so it self aligns. So very cool. You know, you could use those on a, on a surface that is not even and you could still, you know, roll a shaft and, and check it. So. This is going to be a project, hopefully coming up pretty soon for the for the channel here, is to put the right roller kits together, and I'll have one of my own. So thank you very much, Keith, for that. I really appreciate it. He was he was actually uh, 
he said he wanted to send this out for me because I had asked one for a while, a while back actually I asked for it. And um, he was holding it hostage until I got that picture taken that you see on the back of the Clash of the Bash t-shirt. <laughs> I finally got me a picture taken and, and sent it to uh, Quinn and we got that rolling and uh, so he finally sent out his right roller kit to me. So thank you very much Keith. Very cool picture. It's going to go up in there in the office. So I was also going to mention that we've got that T-Max 45 face mill over there that was given to me by Kevin Alexander. I've got a video of that setting the inserts and then making the first test cuts over here. But Kevin actually sent me a couple of 50 taper holders. One is in the mill right now. That's the inch and a half pilot. That's, that's what the face mill is mounted on. And he also sent me this one too. This is a two inch pilot. And this is the type that's got the four hole pattern that it actually bolts onto a face mill. So we got a, a two inch and a inch and a half there. I plan on hopefully just keeping that one on that face mill. I was very pleased with that on how it cut. I, I put a little short teaser video over on, on my Facebook page, the Avon page, of, you know, making that cut, but we've got more involved. I go over here to the granite surface plate and that set up right there and we actually measure the, the tips of all those carbide inserts and, and adjust them so that they're all on the same height. So that's, that's some video coming out. And I've got some other videos coming out too here real soon on uh, some other machine work and some other projects around here in the shop. The, uh, the Blake coax indicator, I did a test on that. And I, I can't remember now, but we've got several videos. I've got some hydraulic cylinder work that's coming out. So we've got plenty of content coming out, guys. So just uh, be on the lookout for it. And by the time you see this, all of the videos for the DRO install has been released so if you're interested in that check that out we're going to do one more quick viewer mill right here <laughs> so i thought i thought this was fitting since i'm getting ready to go do some barbecue this weekend so this uh this is a this is an a-bomb size spatula <laughs> that was sent to me by amy and brent wilkerson and they're from indianapolis indiana and they wanted to uh send this to me and they they said that they, they decided we wanted to get this A-bomb size spatula for an A-bomb size guy. We love the videos and keep them coming. Sincerely, Amy and Brent. So, Amy and Brent, thank you for the spatula. That's very cool. And I look forward to using that out there on the grill. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get to, uh, we're going to get to some machine work now. And I hope to see you again real soon. And hopefully you enjoy the videos this week. All right, guys, we got us a quick little project I'm going to knock out tonight here in the shop. So what I have here are some wheel spacers, and these belong to a friend of mine, Phil, here in town. And he wants to put these on his little aluminum boat trailer. And he told me that he's wanting to put some 18-inch aluminum rims on his, on his boat trailer there. I guess he's trying to bling it out or something. <laughs> I don't know. But evidently, I'm, what I'm getting... I think what's happening is probably the offset is, in, is wrong. It's probably a car wheel and his offset's wrong. So he's having to space the, you know, the hub out a little bit so that the rim will fit on the trailer. So it's a pretty simple, quick operation. All it needs is on this back side right here, this diameter. He says, if you'll just bore it out, whatever this diameter is here, you see it kind of steps down and you have a smaller diameter here. So what's going to happen is this diameter here on the back side is actually a little bit bigger than this OD of this little raised, you know, flangey area. So that's all going to get eliminated, but there'll still be a little radius left there. So he said, just, just face that off there. So probably instead of boring it all out, there may be a little bit left in there, but I'll just come in there with a boring bar and basically just face that off, you know, till it's flush with this face. And then if there's some left in that board, then I'll cut that out. So it's a pretty simple op, and I'm going to use the new gator chuck, three-jaw chuck for this job right here. I'm going to have to flip the jaws around to catch the OD of it like this because the jaws won't open up quite big enough. I think that chuck was rated for opening up four and five-eighths, you know, for that size diameter anyway. This is measuring like six inches. So that's what we'll do. I'll show you how to flip the jaws around. I'll get that done and we'll start cutting a little bit of aluminum. So we're going to go ahead and take the bolts out of the of the jaws 
and flip the jaws around. This is the first time doing this on this chuck. And this is actually the first job for the chuck as well. And surprisingly, these are standard size threads or um, imperial size anyway, you know, inch. It takes a 3 8 Allen wrench. I just want to make sure that there, there's no chips or dust on it when I go back on there. Alright, that's it. So we'll do that two more times. Alright, we got them flipped around. I wanted to point out something on this chuck right here. And this is kind of a common deal now. These jaws are all marked. They have they have the size, the part number, and it, it has an ID number there. At the very end of the ID number, it has a dash and then a three on that one. This is a dash two. This one says dash one, and then up here on the chuck body, you have a number one, a number two, and a number three. So these these jaws are all matched for the master jaw, and probably how they were assembled and then ground and everything like that. So it's best to just leave all these things where they belong instead of taking them all off and then putting them on there some random order. Is to go ahead and match up the jaws, you know, with the chuck body itself keep everything timed like it's supposed to. All right, I'd like to see, the book actually tells you the dimensions that this will hold. I haven't looked at it again today though, but what I'd like to do, see if it'll catch it all the way out here. And it looks like we have success. Yeah, the uh, master jaws are not, are not touching yet. So we are clamping out here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that it's pushed firmly against the chuck jaw give it a little bit of torque and I'd like to see how true it's running now so let me grab my indicator and we'll put it on the out, outside diameter and see if, you know if it's running out so when I did my little inspection test and we got it kind of tuned in there we were 12 tenths on run out on that that tool bit so right here we got Looks like two and a half, two and a half thousand to run out. And what I'm curious about, I don't know if it's done it, is is breaking those jaws loose and flipping them around. I don't know if that's changed uh, the centering position or not. But that's going to be fine for what this job is anyway. We're not going to worry about that two and a half thousand to run out. We're going to go ahead and do the job. So what I need to do also is I need to verify the face and make sure that the face is running flat. Not bad. So we got one thousands right there. Now it could be in the part. I don't know. We're going to see if we can improve it a little bit. But that may be in the part right there, you know. It may be out of square is what I'm saying. Giving it a bump is not really helping it. So we're going to leave it like it is. All right, we're backing up here. I decided to, uh, I wanted to go ahead and check this face on these jaws and see if I'm getting any kind of inconsistency and run out. And what I did, I changed out the tip, the contact tip there, and put a, this wide button nose using the, uh, you know, the, the tip set from Starrett. This is the one that I had found at the flea market a couple months ago, using it for the first time too, the, uh, the big radius tip there.
it looks like I'm getting two thousandths. So that one's minus one. That one doesn't seem square there. From plus one down to zero. Now it goes past that. Hmm, that one doesn't seem to be fully square. I need to check that and make sure that it's that I have that one tight. I think I recall tightening it up. Yeah. It's tight. Seems like that's got nearly two thousandths of of rock in it. Well, that may be where we're getting our uh, our face run out anyway. All right, putting it back in there and checking it again. We're getting the the one thousandths face run out there. So for our tool, what we're going to use is this inch and a half boring bar. This is a WNMG 431 insert. This is a is car. That is a PP style of insert with the chip breaker on it and it's a, it's a really good like positive cutting tool has some you know positive cutting action molded into the cutting edge there it's kind of sharp feeling it's not ground but it does have sort of a sharp edge so it should be pretty good on this aluminum so let's find out go ahead and see what she does I'm just hand feeding that in there, by the way. It looks like we're probably going to have a little bit of board to do on it. Okay, yeah, still got a little lip right there. All right, we'll come in there and eliminate that now. I might have room to take this tool. This is what's nice about the, uh, the multi-fix here. You can take this thing, index it, as long as you got some clearance there. And that'll give me a little bit more room. I come in here and kind of touch that bore. So we're clearing here on the back side. See what I'm doing there? I'm just kind of 
feeding it in by hand, it's right there, so we ain't got much to do. Come back in and I'll, I'm, just, I'm looking for that tool to start cutting that black anodizing. There it is, right there. I'm just feeding it out by hand. And that, right there, not that, but this, see it touching on one side and not the other? That right there is one of the reasons why I always use a four jaw chuck for all my work. That's, that's one of the reasons, but that's, I'm so used to dialing my stuff in within like one thousandths or less. I just like things to run absolutely true that this right here, I guess it's kind of like part of my shop OCD thing. I just like things to be nice and perfectly true. This isn't going to kill anything. That doesn't hurt anything. It's just the way my mind thinks. <laughs> so, all right, we got that done. We just need to chamfer it. So let me find a tool. We can reach in there. You can use a boring bar. Let me see if this one will go in there. I think that'll work right there. And when you got these studs like this, anything that's kind of hanging out, just it's always good practice to spin it by hand to make sure that you're clearing. You're not going to jam anything when you go to turn the spindle on. It's getting a little close, but I think we're going to make it right there. And there it is, okay? All right, one down, one to go. I'll put you guys back there just try to give you a little bit better a little bit different perspective anyway and uh, help me to get in there and kind of see the what I'm doing a little bit better Is spacer number two done? I just flipped all three jaws back around after doing the little spacer job, so I'm gonna I'm gonna recheck this like we did when we first checked the the chuck when we first got it. So that's the same tool bit. That's half inch high speed tool bit. I'm using the pinion up here at the top that's stamped with the zero and I'd just like to see what kind of run out I'm getting after taking the jaws off the master jaws and then putting them back on we'll just use this best test right here and see what we get wrong way Wow, look at that. I'm getting less than a thousandths that time.
let me put my tenths indicator on there and see what we're getting. That's less than a thousand, so that's even better than what I got the first time. Man, that thing is hard to set on a zero. Seems real sticky. Six tenths. Six and a half that time. I think it's moving about a half a tenth. I'm gonna call that six tenths. That's that's unreal. <laughs> well, that's good news anyway. <laughs> All right, so just to just to say, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, I am not trying to pick this chuck apart in any ways. I'm just trying to inspect it, you know, as we as we go forward here. Since it's brand new, I've never had a brand new three jaw chuck. I'm just seeing what I'm what I'm getting on my end. So so far, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, this is this is going to be a nice tool for the shop here. I wanted to go ahead and try to play around with this this nice facing mill that Kevin Alexander sent me. I brought it in here and I'm going to attempt to use it on these flat bar right here. I got a mill down. I want to see how it worked. It's a little bit big for cutting this side right here, but after I cut this side down, I wanted to go ahead and deck each side of it there to clean it up. So he had sent me the paperwork for this thing and at the time I hadn't looked through it yet and read it all. And I wasn't thinking that it was going to be very difficult to change these inserts out, but I was wrong. There's a little bit of a process, and once you figure the process out, then you know what to do. But you have adjusters on here on top and bottom that you have to adjust so that these inserts are on the same plane. You have to adjust them. But I believe once those things are set, you shouldn't have to readjust them. But I messed up a few of them and got them way out of whack. So I've got it set up in the mill, and I've been using the dial indicator right here to get them adjusted after I change these inserts out. So we got a total of 10 inserts and I've got every one of them set really close to that zero. They may be a half a thou off here or there, plus or minus. But I think they're all really, really close. All right, so that's the last one right there. But it doesn't take much to get those really screwed up out of alignment. It's a really different system than what I'm used to. It's got a spring-loaded deal in there also that helps hold that insert in there, which is what these guys are up top. So part of that is, is spring-loaded, and I have to actually tap the insert in there with a nylon hammer to get it to seat. So we got it set now. I'm going to see how it, how it does. Let's go make a cut. You can just look right there where the insert comes around and see they're pretty much all in line. A little bit of fluctuation you see is that little spring-loaded seat that helps pull it down. That was one way that I, that I could tell instantly that I had those things all messed up because this thing was wobbling around. Now this mill ain't going to handle a lot of cut. Talked to that about, I talked about that before. This mill just don't have the rigidity of a big solid American iron mill and not only that this head always just seems to chatter and vibrate a lot I'm gonna start off with light cuts and build up and see what we can do I'm hopefully not gonna kill the inserts first the first time out Seven inches a minute. There's eight inches a minute right there. Yeah, I have to just think a lot of that's the rigidity of the machine. 
I know the holder itself is made to handle a lot of metal removal. The mill just can't handle it. That's doing pretty good right there. I'm going to go down another sixteenth and see if it'll handle an eighth of an inch over here. the chatter that's the mill slow the feed right now a little bit <laughs> it ain't gonna do it okay make sure I didn't screw something up here So there, I proved my point on this mill. It just doesn't have rigidity to it. It's great for lighter stuff, everyday stuff, drilling, tapping, light milling, but heavy metal removal. Uh, the end mills, shell mills, high speed tools are better suited on this mill. So I'm gonna take this one out and put in a uh, roughing shell mill and it, it will it'll slice through that a whole lot better than a carbide insert wheel over here. All right, let's compare it, shall we? All right, we're going to get some coolant going. That mill there is it's actually pretty dull. It doesn't free cut as, as much as it should. I've got I've got that one and I've got a few others that I need to send out to a grinding shop and get them to regrind it. This is a different shell mill. Swapped it out to one that was sharper. That's a quarter inch depth of cut. We got about four inches a minute. Got the mill bogged down pretty good right there. So. We're going to make some quarter inch cuts. 